Good morning, Alaska. It's 8.15 in the morning and the sunrise is 8.45. And the temperature for today is negative 29 degree Fahrenheit. So let's go outside and check how cold it is. And it's so beautiful, it's so peaceful, and it's cold. Look at the horizon, it's like pink and like a light blue sky. So guys, um, there are some facts that I've learned here in Alaska, like during the month of April to August, they have this um, midnight sun days wherein they experience 22 hours of daylight during those days and there's a particular day like june 20 and 21 the summer solstice where they experience 24 hours of daylight that's pretty awesome and the people will do gardening or hiking at night that is like normal like ordinary but in the winter they have the opposite like 22 hours of nighttime and two hours of daylight it's still interesting so guys i'm gonna go back now and cook something for breakfast to get ready for the day so we're all set now for today's adventure and we are about to go out from our hotel room and here we are outside the building and it is so cold like freezing it feels like my eyes are freezing and the cold wind goes straight to my lungs but it's pretty much tolerable just bundle up well and you're good to go well i'm just this typical girl who live in the tropics for a very long time so i always get excited with the snow oh you didn't see that go for it uh-huh <laughs> 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 hello hi everyone <laughs> we're finally here in Fairbanks Alaska it's so cold <laughs> it's like negative 28 So here we are on the way to the resort lobby and we can wait for the for our tour guide to pick us up for our first activity for today which is the dog sledding I am so excited but at the same time I'm kind of scared of the temperature because it really is pretty cold and right now i'm walking too fast to get inside the lobby because i feel like the air is going straight to my lungs so here guys i advise you to have your thermal mask with you if you ever visit fairbanks it really is so important and it's so pretty look at that it's like christmas tree so now we are inside our tour guide's car and he's taking us to the dog sledding area or dog sledding site so it's like 15 to 20 minutes away 
and it's my first time seeing the area because we arrive here night time so I didn't see anything except for the snow and it's a pretty quiet place very relaxing So in here guys, our tour guide is talking about his life here in Alaska and how they cope up with the weather or the temperature and he pretty much loves his life here. So finally we arrive here at the dog sledding site and the other guy is preparing the dogs. They are so adorable Siberian Huskies and Alaskan Malamutes. Well the reason why I chose this tour company is they have this um, pure Siberian Huskies and Alaskan Malamutes because if you go to the other tour companies um, their dogs are adorable too but they are in different breeds so well you want to experience the real Alaskan adventure so you want those pure Huskies and Malamutes just like the ancient Eskimo or Alaskan natives use back in the days and here guys we are getting ready for the dog sled here we go Let's dog go. sledding it up, is up. Easy! Easy! <laughs> Hello, turn around, say hi. And as far as the archaeologists can tell, dog sledding was invented by the Alaska natives and Inuit people or the Eskimo. And it has been used in the Arctic and it is very important for their transportation back in the days. And you know guys, these dogs, they are very big. They're big dogs and they are very, very strong. You won't underestimate them. And it is as if they know already that it is their job. And they were so excited when we were about to start. They were jumping around. They want to start right away. And they are built for this kind of temperature yes the sub-zero and rest assured guys that these dogs are well taken care of like the owners they don't even call them pets they call them their children and they feed them with salmons fresh salmons like they don't usually give them treats like from the cans or from the grocery store so that's the reason these dogs they are very adorable <laughs> and they look very very healthy dogs so guys i'm advising you whenever you find yourself here in fairbanks this is one of the top activities that you're gonna do here to experience the real alaskan adventure and so we are about to finish this 30 minute dog sled ride and here are the cute adorable fellas in here we have time to pet them hello there he's so chunky oh my gosh he's like my him. favorite ever this malamute <laughs> he wants to come to oh, really? anybody 
anyone and take pictures. Oh my God. He's very adorable. Yeah. <laughs> He's a very big dog. Oh. Yeah. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> This one, thank you for the dog sled. Ah. So nice. Hi. Hello. 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 Oh, huh? Homer, Homer, get off her. Homer. Get, get. You get home. So after the dog sledding, we asked our tour guide to just drop us off at the airport so we can pick up our car rental. So that today we can go to some other parts of Fairbanks, go to the Alaska sign, to the pipeline and also drive all the way to China Hot Spring which is like an hour drive. and I wasn't able to take a video but here's from budget company and they gave us the full SUV which is very nice and our first stop is the Pikes Landing so this is very popular this is a resort and you know this path right here that I'm walking is the China River so it is a frozen river actually i'm scared walking on frozen lakes or river whatever but i trust alaska winter that it's so frigid cold so definitely this river is frozen to the bottom and that's the alaska sign and by the way guys this pot um, this is the perfect spot to see the aurora. Um, there's a lot of times that people see uh, the aurora here vividly. So this river is very popular for ice fishing. And there's a lot of salmon in here guys. So I think it is very nice in here in the summer. Because it's a big river in the interior Alaska. So there's a lot of people here who also want to take picture with the Love Alaska sign. So pretty much this Love Alaska sign is worth the stop. So here we're taking turns to take pictures. So here guys, we are going back to the car and we're gonna drive all the way to the um, Alaskan pipeline. So it's one of the interesting spots in here. So it's only like 10 minute drive to go there. So guys, we are finally here at the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. So the history of this is 
1968 when the largest oil deposit in the U.S. was discovered underneath the Prudhoe Bay and so they built this Trans-Alaskan Pipeline. And it is one of the world's largest pipeline system. It carries an average of 1.8 million barrels of oil a day from Prudhoe Bay to the town of Valdez. So by the way guys, if you are a resident of Alaska, the state allots an equal amount of state's oil royalties to every resident through an annual dividend. That's pretty cool. So in order for you to become a resident here in Alaska, you have to live here for like a year and you have some proof that um, you have this agreement like leasing or anything that will prove that you're gonna live here more than that and so guys we're now taking some pictures and it really is a very interesting place because you know we found out that this is where our gas in the mainland came from not most of it but it is really worth the stop and so from here guys we gotta go to the chinara hot spring and i'll see you there